due to especially what just occurred with me, yeah, there there is there is reason to to explore. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Just sit back down for me, Sean. Thank you very much. Um, in fact, I tell you what, could you all just stand up for me? All right. Hands up if you believe in God at this moment. Apart from the people I've just spoken to. Put your hands up if you believe in God. Be honest. Okay. That's one of you. Great. Thank you. Apart from the people I just spoke to, so, yeah, all right. Thank you. Now put your feet together. Just all of you, just close your eyes for me. So there is something here in this room. There is something here. And as I talk to you now, I want you, whatever you imagine there, whatever that spirit is, just to feel it in this room and feel it like a pressure moving into you. Moving into you around your heart, your chest and your shoulders, against your face and your eyes. And as I talk to you, I want you to feel that moving into you. And not to fight it, but to welcome it. And to embrace it. And to allow it to move you in whatever way. And as I talk to you, just let that get stronger. Let that feeling get stronger. And stronger. And really feel it now, just moving into you. Moving into you. One at a time, just feeling it right. Just, just embrace it. Just let it fall in. Good. Do you believe in God now? Yes, nice and clear. Do you believe in God? Be yes, honest. I do. Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? Yes. Yes? yes. Be honest with me, all right? Be honest with me. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Do you believe in God? Yes, very much so. Do you believe in God? There is something. There is something. Do you believe in God? Definitely. And you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Kurt left with half the group after the first conversion, but is still impressed. I wondered if there's not something just in, in his body, uh, an energy, electrical <laughs> impulse uh, that doesn't zap people. I cannot explain the warm hug that the one young woman experienced, uh, except that uh, maybe that is God speaking to her. that that he loves her. So I, I do know people who've come to Christ uh, with a radical uh, conversion that is very different from most conversions, um, but nothing quite like James. <laughs> he was impressed, but to his credit, wanted to meet again before he'd offer a full public endorsement. Yeah, the endorsement's important because the ability to show that even as a charlatan, you can quite easily um, ingratiate yourself into that, into that world and be part of that fiction, if it is fiction. My next stop is Las Vegas, a city based on false hopes. I'm here as Robert Frawley, a man who has the power to tell people's dreams. There are no clocks in the casinos, uh, no sense inside of whether it's day or night, and all the hotel rooms are really bare, uh, so there's nothing to do but to keep on gambling. It's a hypnotic scam, but Vegas is the place to come and try and catch your dreams. And in a way, a lot of these new age industries are similar. Um, a lot of pretty colours and saccharin that hide really nothing but false hope. In a way, it's a bit like this. Looks like it does something, but it doesn't. All it does is it just turns a green light on and off. That's all it does. This is my new electronic dream catcher. Despite the fact it's just a battery in a pretty box, can I convince this next lady that it records her dreams and then replays them to me? So we're going to go and visit a lady called Lorraine de Felice, who is very successful in the New Age industries. She's a magazine proprietor, an author, uh, and she owns some of the top New Age websites. She's very sweet but she is massively influential. I'm going to present her with a miracle. How skeptical will she be? And if she asks me if it's real, I will tell her no. Lorraine has been using the dream catcher now for five days. She believes I'm developing it as a product and I'm after feedback and publicity for it. 
Will she believe it's real and endorse me to her public? Tell us a bit about your background, about the esoteric world news that you looked after about. Give us a little, a little history of who you are. In 1979, I decided to start the esoteric world. Uh, it was a newspaper, and eventually it became a magazine. And um, I printed thousands a month. Mm. Uh, I had thousands of members. Each member got a copy of what the other sent in. Now we have the internet, mm. which we didn't have 10 yeah. years ago. And it's doing very well, isn't it? Yeah. We've got thousands of pages on the internet. Every metaphysical subject, I think probably the best, biggest metaphysical site on the net. Do you feel influential in that position? It has changed the lives of a lot of people. Mm. Um, I'd like to talk about the, the dream machine that you mm -hmm. have. And just so that people at home understand what's happened previously, we delivered to you one of these machines mm -hmm. and you were given instructions to use it for, you've had it for five nights, I think. This Correct. is right. Okay. That's the machine itself. And this is the pillowcase which plugs into the dream catcher and you've been sleeping on this. I asked you just to remember whatever dreams that you